Now on BBC One, tonight's edition of South Today with Bruce Parker and Sally Taylor. Court cases delayed after claims the documents have disappeared. The ambulance men's industrial action, the effect is limited. And up periscope as we go under the ocean waves. But first tonight, it's alleged that dozens of legal cases in Southampton, including divorces, have been delayed because court papers have been lost or shedded. A Southampton County Court clerk faced a disciplinary hearing in Winchester today to answer accusations that he shedded papers in order to cut down on his workload. The man has been suspended on full pay since the allegations were made. The inquiry comes as civil service unions step up their protests at what they say is an intolerable workload for court staff. News of the suspension of the court clerk at Southampton was confirmed by the Lord Chancellor's Department. The man, who hasn't been named, works for the county court, handling a range of cases, including applications for divorce. When South Today initially questioned the Lord Chancellor's Department, a spokesman told us that the documents allegedly shredded did not relate to court matters. He said it was purely an administrative affair and that there had been no public damage. But this surprised leading members of the legal profession in Hampshire. A solicitor told us that when a colleague questioned why his cases were not being progressed, he was told by court officials that it was because documents had been shredded. The solicitor told us that the documents allegedly destroyed did relate to court cases here at the county court. He told us people were putting stuff into the system, but nothing was coming out. When these comments were put to the Lord Chancellor's Department this afternoon, they continued to strongly reject any suggestion that any member of the public has been inconvenienced by what has allegedly happened. A spokesman said, we are strongly of the opinion that what has happened remains purely internal. The County Court in Southampton deals with a whole range of non-criminal cases, including around 2,000 divorces a year, debt proceedings and small claims of less than £500. The inquiry has taken place against a background of serious staffing problems in courts throughout the whole country. It can take up to 18 months for cases to be heard. It's very serious. We warned the Department of this two years ago when we had our crisis in the courts campaign, and they took a little bit of action immediately after that, but then they become complacent, and it's got even worse now, mainly because a lot of staff have left the Department. Does it affect your members? What sort of pressure do they say they under? The pressure they're put under is they're, they're having to deal with complaints from um, from the court users more frequently because they're not able to get around to doing their particular item of work and everybody that goes to the court believes that their item is the, the most important item. The Lord Chancellor's Department said that it was aware of the pressure of work on county court staff and that a new computerisation scheme was due to begin next year. A spokesman said that the handling of death cases had been streamlined and that new targets have been set to speed up the handling of documents, judgments and court orders. He said staff shortages were due to illness and holidays, but the Lord Chancellor's Department denied that there was low staff morale. Marion Fountain reporting. The effect of the national overtime ban on ambulance movement in the south has been limited. This is despite the fact that most ambulance men across the region are observing the ban, although Wiltshire is an exception. Around 25% of the ambulance men there are choosing to work normally. Pauline Brandt reports. Today in Hampshire, nine ambulances from the 40-strong fleet were taken out of service and over 30 patients could not be supplied with transport. This was because shifts were reorganised to maintain emergency cover. We've been quite fortunate at this point in time. We have obviously been speaking to the staff representatives and we are aware of what their position is. At the present time, we've not lost any emergency cover whatsoever, and we are still providing a first class emergency service. But union officials say that the ban is effective in the context of this being the first day of action. Only this morning, the Deputy Chief Ambulance Officer himself, prior to the day shift coming on duty, made a public statement saying they'll actually take off nine vehicles and reduce the patient workload for the first part of the morning by 33. In Berkshire and West Sussex, the spokesman said that services were relatively normal. Wiltshire is slightly different from the other counties. Nearly three quarters of services, such as outpatients and day hospitals, were put out to contract several years ago. 
It has left the ambulance men numbers totaling around 160, far fewer than in other counties. Ambulance men in Salisbury and Trowbridge were working normally. Meanwhile, ambulance men and women have found support today from the Conservative MP for Brighton. I believe the offer of 6.5% is too low. That could be increased by 2 to 2.5%. If that had been the offer in the first place, I don't think we'd have this trouble today. Despite relatively normal services today, the union mutu warned that the overtime ban could escalate. But the ambulance service is hoping to minimise the effect by continuing to reorganise shifts. The residents of two old people's homes in Hampshire have failed in their last-ditch attempt for a reprieve from closure. A motion calling for a stay of execution has been rejected at a meeting of the full county council. But staff and union officials say they'll fight on to save the two homes and eight others which are under review. Steve Savile reports. Councillors arriving for the full meeting of Hampshire County Council in Winchester were lobbied by staff and union officials who'd collected a petition of almost 10,000 signatures against the closures. The old people's homes under threat were Campton House at Burley in the New Forest and St Vincent's Lodge in South Sea, Portsmouth. Among the 44 residents of the two homes is Bessie Thomas, who's 106 and determined to fight the closure. The social services said they needed to rationalise their vacancies in the county's residential homes. But the staff said closure wasn't the answer. When you look at the fact that they are opening private homes left, right and centre in the Portsmouth area, and they're already claiming that there are far, far, far too many empty beds waiting as it is. And um, they're closing from Vincent Lodge, or they want to close from Vincent Lodge, and yet all over the place they're opening these private homes. They just haven't made, just done that up. Union officials backing the staff were determined to save these homes and eight others under review. We should battle on. We should battle on certainly for the other eight homes, and I'm sure that we will have the support of the community and indeed the people that work within them. Elderly residents of the two homes are tonight bracing themselves to move house, a move they thought they'd never have to make again. You're watching South Today from the BBC. Still to come in tonight's programme, Southern Democrats back on environmental charter. A simulated attack in our second look at life beneath the waves and your ticket to what's happening in the South with Seen South. The time exactly 6.40. Good evening, tonight's news from around the region. 30 people have been demonstrating outside a detention centre in Hampshire in support of Kurdish refugees being held there. A busload of supporters arrived at the Haslar detention centre in Gosport this morning. They're protesting about the conditions in which they say the refugees are being held. Late last night, 30 Kurds inside Haslar abandoned their week-long hunger strike, claiming they'd been given assurances by the Home Office that their cases would be dealt with in the next two months. This morning, one of the supporters was allowed into the centre, accompanied by a solicitor. The refugees are seeking political asylum in Britain. Two men have appeared before Portsmouth magistrates charged with robbing a Purbrook pensioner. 69-year-old Douglas Wick had money and keys stolen in an attack on Monday. Labourer Christopher Roberts and 19-year-old Darren Cross, both of whom come from Purbrook, were remanded in custody following their court appearance. Operations at the Royal County Hospital at Ryde on the Isle of Wight had to be postponed today after a fluorescent tube in the theatre overheated. Fumes were given off and the theatre had to be re-sterilised. Some patients in a nearby ward were moved and the theatre staff were treated in casualty for runny eyes and headaches. The Arts Minister Richard Luce has been in Salisbury today attending the annual festival. He dropped in on events at the Arts Centre, the City's Museum and a local junior school before attending a civic reception. One of the highlights of the visit was a dancing lesson. The minister watched as youngsters learned some of the skills of jazz dancing. Cricket now, and Hampshire's second day against Gloucestershire at Bristol was finally abandoned after two. Hampshire had taken their total to 287 for seven off 90 overs. And rain also brought play to an early close in the game between Sussex and Surrey at the Oval. Sussex were 64 without loss in reply to Surrey's 385. There's still no sign of a formal agreement in the million-pound transfer of Southampton footballer Danny Wallace to Manchester United. Wallace has been to the North West today to discuss personal terms, but it's understood he left without signing any contract. And finally from me. A sound more familiar among the mountains of Europe was heard in the seaside resort of Bournemouth today as some traditional alpine horns marked the official opening of the town's southern lifestyle ideal home exhibition. 
The Finn 16 for Corns were blown by a father and son team specially brought over from Switzerland. More than 10,000 visitors are due to see the exhibition between now and Sunday. That's all for me for the moment. Now back to Abbott Sally. Thank you, Martin. The Democratic Conference at Brighton today approved a motion calling on local councils to take action based on an environmental charter. Representatives from the South played a key role in the debate. From Brighton, Emma Udwin reports. Mean, the budget's perfect. What I've grown is not eating vegetables. What's wrong with the budget? 